Hello, I'm Dr. Ron England, and I'm going to take you through how to do some charting with .NET. Charting library we're going to use is a charting library called HiCharts, and HiCharts is an actually very excellent ch charting library. It's written in JavaScript, and it's a, and it is purely a JavaScript-based charting library, which means that it's going to be compatible with pretty much every browser, and can be used in pretty much any programming environment. But the programming environment we're going to use for this is going to be .NET. So we're going to kind of go over to um, some shell libraries. Uh, from CodePlex, you have highcharts.codeplex.com, which is a library. Um, and there's multiple libraries for, for um, within .NET that actually use highcharts. But I'm going to use this library specifically. Once you've downloaded the library, it's going to, in your downloads folder, create a zip file called highcharts.net 1.0, or whatever version it could be. Of, of right now, the version I'm using is 1.0. And if you unzip this, you're going to have a highchart.dll and these other files, two DLL files, and two PDB files, which are debug databases. Those files, then, you should go ahead and copy into your project, into your bin directory. Just actually go into your project itself. Uh, if you go to your project, you'll notice that you'll find a bin directory. Let me pull one up so you can see it. So here's the files that I was going to copy. If I were to go back to my, not to my desktop, but to my documents, Visual Studio 2012, uh, projects, then the project I want to do, and you'll find a directory called bin, underneath the sample application, bin, and you can copy those files into that bin directory. That'll make them available to you. But then once you've done that, you need to go ahead and add them into your project itself. So let's pull our project over here that we're working on. This is a Visual Studio project and you have to add these files as a reference. Now for what I'm doing right now I only need the high charts. If you right click on references and say add reference you're going to be able to browse your hard drive and find that DLL file. Now I've already added that and it'll show up here as high chart. So once I've added that reference it's there. Now there's one other thing I need to do if you are actually download the high charts from the CodePlex, you're going to find that it's going to give you instructions of how to make these charts available to you as objects you can drop onto a web page. But let me show you right off the bat how to do this. Underneath in your web config file, within the uh, pages tag, pages, pages, you'll have another set of tags called controls and you can add now we're going to create the tag prefix of high chart the namespace is high chart .ui, which is going to be part of the using and the assembly it's going to use is the high chart assembly that's the assembly by the way that you just added that reference that you just added is that assembly so now what I'll have is once I do this I'll have the ability to put that directly into a page if you follow the instructions on the website it gives you a little bit more information more stuff that you would add into here um, that you actually don't need to add. What you really do need is this piece right here. So let's do something with these high charts. Well, I've already created a page called plotexample.aspx, which uses the site master. So what I can do now is I can put content in here underneath the ASP content piece. And what is nice is that I should have the high charts. So suppose I want to put a line chart in there. I can do a line chart. Now I need to do the regular things that I do in this case. I can do run at equals server. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give it an ID, which I'll call HC high chart HC line. Um, I can give it a width, and I'll make it about 500. You can change this very easily, and I can give it a height, and I'll get the height to be 400. So now if I go to design mode, well, it's really just a blank space. Okay, you don't have anything. It's not really valid right now. Um, it needs to be available. Now I also am missing, by the way, the close tag there. So now it's closed up. And if you go now, if you go over to design, it's just a blank space. Okay, there's nothing actually in it yet. I haven't put any. I haven't not plotting anything yet. So I come back over to the source. That gives you the basics of the high chart. Now. One thing that you really probably have to have an ability to do is to look at what the objects are within this library. So let's go back up to that reference that I put up here called HiChart. Okay, if I right click on that, 
I can say view an object browser and the object browser now shows over here high chart and I can see that I've got one, two, three, four, five, six namespaces here. Core, core.appearance, core.data.chart, core.events, core.plot options, and then highchart.ui. If you do highchart.ui and open that up, you'll see that those are the types of charts that you can create. Area, and what we did is we did a line chart, and you've got all sorts of properties that'll be available if you as you click down and find all the different things that are part of this. And notice that it actually has some interfaces that go with that. So I'm going to control that whole thing back up. But you can see that there's some objects that are available within this high chart UI namespace. And you'll see that's true of all these other ones too. Well, let's go back over to this plot example. And the easiest way to do this is actually from an example. Uh, what we want to do is now go to the code behind for this plot example.aspx and in the code behind let's go ahead and put the code that you need to have to to create a high chart now what I'm gonna do is I'm simply gonna copy the code a few modifications that were in the documentation and then we'll go through how that code works so I create an HC line and if you if you look at the HC line is a high chart plot if you put the dot there you can see what properties you have that you have access you have access to the properties that we're going to create are a y axis and an x axis. And by using this add, it allows me to add a new y axis item, which is another type of object. Now, up here, this may not work for you, because up here you can see that I have already put in the usings that go with these. So, what I've done is I've looked at this thing like y axis item and x axis item, and I found the, the, uh, the library or namespace that goes with those, and I've added it to the code at the top using the using. And I've discerned that UI, core, data.chart, and core.plot options are the libraries, the namespaces that contain the objects that I need to do here. Now, what you're really doing here is you're adding a new y-axis to this line chart by adding a new y-axis with the property title set to equal to be a new title. It's pretty straightforward if you kind of work your way through the documentation. You'll see that the objects within the .NET library for high charts completely match the objects that are in the high charts JavaScripts. It's just in the JavaScript you set those properties using JSON, JS, J, JavaScript object notation, and here you actually use C sharp objects that have the same name and essentially the same data types and primitives that you have in the other one. So the next thing that we want to do is we've got a y axis and we created an x axis. Okay, the last thing that we're going to do here is we've got to put this these x-axis in there um, data that go with it. So I've got this x-axis item, which is the base of the x-axis. I need to plot something. And the thing that you plot is called a series. But you know what? We wanted the ability to plot multiple series. And to do that, you simply create a new list of objects of type series, which is right here. Ver series, which is an instantiation of the list. And the list is an actual list of Siri, which is what high charts calls a series of data. Then we just say series.add and we add a new Siri here and we just put the object in the data in here as an object array. And that's actually how it has to go in as an object array. It's going to be of numbers. And voila, you should have a chart. Except that you've got to set the data source to be equal to the series, which is the object that you created, which is a list. This can be bound as data items, and then you data bind it, and you should have this working. So what should happen when you run this? Well, let's run it and find out. Should pull up the browser, and you should get a line chart, and it's having to compile it. And I'll show you one other thing that you have to do to make this work, because there's one more thing to do. And there's that chart with the series that we had right there done in high charts. So we can go back over here and we can go ahead and stop this. There was one piece that I didn't tell you here, but in the plot example, it does tell you that you have to have a reference to jQuery. Well, jQuery in my project was already in the scripts directory right here. And so what I simply did is I put a script reference to that jQuery and the entire thing ran just beautifully. If you go to the CodePlex file, if you go to CodePlex and look at this within CodePlex, 
you'll see that there are plenty of examples that you can work off of and uh, documentation to go with this and you can you know, work your way around but now you should have the ability to do charts and plots you will have to work your way through the object libraries that go with this but what I've done is I've created a basic chart and shown you how those different objects work together and the libraries that those objects come from thank you very much hopefully this will get you up and running starting with charting uh, using high charts and .NET. Thank you very much.